Okay. Hi, friends. How are we? I was gonna put my leg up on my seat. It isn't big enough for that. Welcome. My name's Lily. If you haven't been with us before, hello. How are you? I am gonna start a reading vlog. Grab some water. Yeah. My name's Lily. I make videos every once in a while about books. I mean, and when I say every once in a while, I mean like few and far between. I have filmed reading vlogs before. I did one for The Cruel Prince and I never posted it because I didn't actually like, like the book. Um, and then for those of you who are worried, I did actually love the second one, but the first one didn't do it for me. That's a long story long. But yeah, I'm reading a couple books right now, um, Night Circus and one that I found on TikTok. Um, so I'm going to read both of those. I'll bring you along. I'm halfway through both of them. And then I want to start Babel. Um, or Babel. I've heard it both ways. Heard it both ways. The right way and then yours. So I'm going to bring you along on all three of those. Before that, I've got some, um, I'm taking an art history class right now. So I'm going to do my reading for that. And then, then we'll get to do that, which I'm very excited for. So Babel, I'm like, literally cannot wait. When I read Night Circus, I'll tell you about my thoughts about it, but oh my gosh, I just... I love it. It's so good. And I am I think I'm about halfway through right now. It's very good. I really, really like it so far. Um, and when I get to that one, I'll, I'll give you a bit more of my thoughts on it. Um, and then this other one I'm reading is the second book in a series. If the series isn't good, like I won't recommend it to anyone, but I'm enjoying it. So with that in mind, I guess we'll get into it. I'm going to do my homework. Uh, you're not going to see me do my homework, but after I do my homework, my reward is I get to read my books. Friends, we did it. Done with my homework. I can read my book. I just got back from my uh, drawing critique lab and um, it's my first time meeting this professor and it's just very funny. He hates, hates anime and he like went on a rant for a minute. I got these earrings. My friend just sent them to me for my birthday. So thank you, Emily. I love them. Um, I've always wanted a pair of like fantasy earrings, but I've never bought them for myself and I feel like I like these a lot. Anyways, okay, my point is I'm so excited to be done with class um, and like with class for today. Well, Ash and the Embers. This is the one I was talking about. I found the first one, which is like Shadow and Mist of Mist and Shadow, something like that. Saw it on TikTok as like fey witcher <laughs> and i really like the witcher books i read the first two we're all like collectively in love with henry catwell right or at least i am <laughs> i saw it on tiktok describing it as that it's a great example that ideas can be great and the execution can be done poorly and that's pretty much where i'm at with this one i wouldn't describe it anywhere near the witcher i don't think that's accurate at all basically we've got this girl named tessa which is i think an overused name in books and i'm kind of sick of hearing it She's a human. She lives in this kingdom where there is a fey king and once every 75 years this king chooses a mortal bride um, because none of the fey women can have children anymore and so he marries a mortal and then has a bunch of children with her. Surprise! It's the most predictable book you'll ever read. She gets chosen and so she's like trying to escape. There's some like mist king thing happening. Anyways, it's not very good, <laughs> but I am really enjoying it. So I picked up the second one actually as soon as I finished the first one. I, it's pretty much where I'm at with this is like, I'm never going to recommend it to anyone ever. Um, but I'm going to read all of them. And when the next one comes out in April, I'll probably read that one too. But I'll never tell anyone to read them because they're pretty poorly written but the story's kind of fun <laughs> anyways yeah I'm gonna go back to reading this one I'm almost done they're so easy to read too which is really nice I love how quickly I can just like I started this yesterday I'm a fairly slow reader for those of you who haven't been here before I guess I don't know if I've ever said that before I read really slowly I just read a lot I'm taking way too much time to tell you I'm reading this book of Ash and Ember by Jenna Wolfhard and I, I'm enjoying it. I am. As embarrassing as that is. I also have major problems with it. I love that the author does this and I think more authors need to do it which is she puts a list or a place to find a list of like triggers basically which I think is really 
good. I think more, I think you should understand what you're getting into before you consume media. A big theme throughout the first book, done without a lot of, I don't know how to describe it. The, the character spends a lot of time understanding she's going to be assaulted, um, which is heavy and dark and um, can be a hard thing to talk about in a book that's like romance forward and kind of generally on the lighter side. And it doesn't do it very well. In fact, I think it's one of the worst parts of the book. This one has done a little bit better with it, but that she's been physically abused and emotionally abused. And it's just kind of like, I don't know, the way that it's talked about is done so poorly. I have a really big issue with it. So that's like the first book. I'm on the second book now and it's doing a lot, a lot better. It's doing fairly better. <sighs> Basically I have enormous problems with the book, but the actual like romance, I'm not having a hard time with. Anyways, that was way too long to tell you. I'm just gonna read this book. I'm gonna finish it. I'm not gonna finish it tonight probably, but I will read a lot of it tonight and we'll see where we get to. Meet back up once I've finished it. Okay, I am getting to a ball scene, which are my favorite. I'm very picky about them, but the dialogue is atrocious. Um, so you're picky about that. These are not for you. Yeah. Balsam. I love myself a balsam. I am so, like, viscerally against PDA. <laughs> this is painful. This is painful. is so embarrassing. Not done yet. I don't know how much I read. I'm on page 337 now. Like I said, I read pretty slowly. Um, and I'm gonna read more tonight, but I remember that one of my New Year's goals is to do yoga every day for a month. Um, so we're on day five and I forgot. Gonna do it like I said I was gonna do it and then I'm gonna read it in my bed and I'll update you tomorrow. Okay, so I just took a nap. <laughs> I feel exhausted, so I'm sorry for the hair and the like mascara that's rubbed across my eyes, but I'm also not willing to fix it. So before I take a nap, I finished of Ash and Ember. Okay. And I don't know if I'll include all the videos I took of me kind of explaining my thoughts as I was reading them because I feel like I was really tired and I was just not making a lot of sense, but also being a little harsher than I'd like to be in this. <laughs> so um, for those of you who want to see it, this is the first one, um, of Mist and Shadow. I've been seeing it all over my TikTok and so I bought it. I have a lot of negative things to say about it. I feel like, I feel like that's a fine and fair thing to say. I didn't like a lot of the elements in this book, but with that being said, I did buy the next one immediately after reading the first one. So do with that information what you will. I want to start out by saying some of the things that I did like about it. Because I didn't dislike everything, there were just a lot of things I didn't like. And also by saying that I think I will read the next one still. But let me start with the good things. So I think this book, the first book especially, um, gets a little bit of the like 
pining and yearning for each other. Really like that. That's my jam. Um, and I think it did that pretty well. I thought the some of the characters in the first one were really fun to read. The second book of Ash and Embers um, expands more than the first one does, which actually fixes some of the problem that I had with the first one, which is the first one is very, very simple. There's not much there. I think that a lot of people get really wrapped up in like needing a fantasy world to be fully, fully fleshed out to have like brilliant world building. And I don't always feel like that, that but this book, I think, at least in the first one was really um, lacking <laughs> to the point where because the story wasn't strong enough, um, where usually you can like fall back on the world and the magic and the characters and the writing if the story isn't brilliant. Um, this one, you couldn't. <laughs> this one, the story wasn't great and the world wasn't fleshed out either and the characters were kind of simple. Um, the, f the second book really fleshes out more. You get background and you get flashbacks that help you understand a little bit more. It does feel like um, she reached the end of the first one and realized a lot of mistakes and kind of took the second book to backtrack and expand. I'm like still trying to figure out how I feel about <laughs> how I feel about it because with everything that I have a problem with, I also know that I'm gonna get the next one. So those are those are some I like totally went on a rant about the bad things again. Bad things, things I didn't like. The writing style is really juvenile. The dialogue can be really hard to read sometimes. It's kind of, there are moments where it's so cringy. Um, I also am kind of not a huge fan of smut, so that didn't do it for me. But again, that's like a personal thing not really something that's like technically wrong with the book. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like I I have thoughts about the book. There are so many things that could have easily been done better and it just like wasn't thought through. Um, and I feel that way about both books. Like the first book, we have a split uh, point of view and I don't think that helps the story actually. I think some books it really does. Um, and I actually love an enemies to lovers story where you're getting both points of view so you can kind of see into their characters more but this one I think that the main character needed a little bit more like to be fleshed out a little bit more she's so like angry but you don't know why second book explains it a little bit more but she's kind of a dull character and I think that having having a uh, single point of view would actually help her out a bit because in the first book we're following her she's the main character we don't really need the personal insight into this other character because as soon as it comes back to her chapter it's repeated in her own voice um, so I think it's like fairly <laughs> unnecessary and then not beyond that why I really think it would like really help the storyline is because half the book is spent with her wondering if she can trust this person if this person is who she's been told all her life this person is and when we split it and we immediately get this like i'm a good person when it splits the point of view back to his point of view i think it actually ruins it a little bit because you no longer have this aspect of wondering because we know um, and because the entire book <laughs> is that, um, it gets a little bit boring. That's where I'm at with it. I, I will probably have more thoughts about it later and I feel bad about bashing a book, especially when I know I'm going to read the next one and it comes out in April. It's just a little embarrassing. <laughs> it's a pretty flawed book. Um, and I'm going to read it. <laughs> it's a flawed book and I kind of enjoyed it. Yeah, it's an easy read. I think people get really upset with like juvenile writing. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, but I do think that beautiful writing can help a story that isn't fleshed out as much. And it can help you love a book where you don't like the characters. And it can help you love a book where you don't like the world. Um, and in this one, it's not that I hated the writing or I hated the characters or I hated the world I just felt like everything could have been like a little bit more vibrant and a little bit more full than it was and um and so when on top of all of that the writing is a little mush um I don't know I'll have more thoughts about it later I want to like really 
put it out there that I am going to read the next one. But I'm also not going to suggest these books to anybody. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. They're hugely flawed, but they're easy to read and they're kind of fun to read. So, I don't know. With that, <laughs> with that, I'm going to leave. Um, and I'm going to, let's see, I've got a couple minutes before I need to go pick someone up. And in that time, I'm going to go read more of Night Circus, which I am loving. Night Circus is so like dreamy in its writing style. Oh, I really love it. I feel like I don't understand the plot of it, <laughs> but the like writing style itself is so, it feels like you're dreaming it and um, in like the best way possible. It doesn't ever really explain things, at least as far into the book as I am. And I don't mind it. Um, I really, really am enjoying the characters, even though I don't fully understand them yet. And um, the world is just, I, even though it's like our world, it's like our world with more, <laughs> with more. I just am really, really enjoying it. So I'm going to go read more of that. Um, I feel bad ending on like a, I think these books aren't that good, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I have such mixed feelings about both of these books, the Mist King books. Um, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll have to think about them and come back with like better, more fully formed thoughts on them because I feel so torn about them <laughs> because usually when I like a book and I'm enjoying a book, I'm like, it has this, 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 and this that are all good. And that's why I like them. And in this one, I'm like, I have no idea why I liked it because there's nothing in it that I can like point to and say, this is what I liked about it. I just kind of did. And I will never suggest them to anyone. <laughs> so uh, I'm so torn on them. I'm so torn on them. Um, so I'm going to need to think about them and come back with coherent thoughts. <laughs> um, but yeah, until then, I'm going to go read my book. Um, it's Saturday now. I literally don't know how that happened. I don't even know where to start. <sighs> I'm almost done with Night Circus. Oh my goodness. Well, I read a lot of Night Circus today, this morning, and then went grocery shopping. And I live in the middle of nowhere, and so the grocery store is miles away. <laughs> While I was in town, we found this really, really cute, um, bookstore that I had never seen before. Um, independently owned which is great. I usually go to Barnes & Noble because that's what's around and I know it's gonna be there and I just didn't think that we had any other bookstores so this is a fun one to find. I picked up Our Wives Under the Sea which I'm so excited for. I've been hearing everybody talk about it and I love when bookstores give you a bookmark. That's the best ever. <laughs> it seems like this one is kind of more on the mysterious side. I'm just I'm so excited to get to this one. I think it's going to be really good. Before I went, I read a lot of Night Circus. Okay, I'm almost done. I am in love with this book. I can't believe I put it off for so long because now that I've read it, I, I want everyone to read it. I, I can't tell you what has happened without spoiling it, but I'm at like a big part. So... I'll tell you the date we're on. I'm on November 1st, 1902 in New York. Um, and I've just finished the chapter called Aftermath. And then I had to go, <laughs> which is kind of like a horrible spot to leave off on, but I'm in love with the writing style and the characters are just like so lovable and you instantly love them, even though in the beginning you don't get to know them super well. But you, like, love them anyway. Oh, this book is just beautiful. And I'm so excited. I actually have picked up um, The Starless Sea by her as well. I picked it up on a sale. I hadn't read this yet. I hadn't even started it yet. But I was kind of convinced I was going to love her writing. <laughs> so I picked that one up too. 
for like five bucks or something like that. Ugh, I'm so excited to read it. I'm so, so excited to read it. But yeah, that's where I'm at right now. I am going to keep reading this. I'm going to hopefully finish this one tonight. I am so in love with it. But yeah, I finished the homework I'm going to do for now. I'm going to do some more later. I'm convinced I this is going to be a new favorite author for me. Not just like a new favorite book, but I... I'm so in love with the way that it's written that I can't imagine not liking her other books. So I'm really, really, really excited and kind of worried. Like, um, for those of you who have read it and you know where I am in the book, I, if anything bad happens, if anything bad happens, uh, anyways, gonna go, gonna go finish it. I finished it. I finished Night Circus and oh my goodness, it is so good. Um, just gonna start out by saying I give it five stars. I, there was nothing in this book I didn't like. It hit everything I want a book to hit. The world that is so like full and vibrant and oh my gosh, it's like you can just picture it so perfectly even though it's not um I don't think everything's like described in like extensive detail but you get this like feeling of what it would be to be in the circus and the smells and some of the things that you're seeing the color schemes the just like oh my gosh just the feel like I could picture myself there it was so perfect I loved it so much and then the characters are just flawed and lovely and trying to do the right thing. But they're in these like strange circumstances that they don't have full control over. So they're very like human characters. The love story in it is just delightful. You can feel their affection for each other. Oh my gosh, I just loved it. I loved it. I just really... It did exactly what I wanted it to do, and the ending is so satisfying. I got worried as I got towards the end, especially where I left off this morning. So no spoilers, but it, um, the ending is really satisfying. Oh, it was so good. I wish there was another one, but also I'm glad that there isn't. I'm glad it ends where it ends, and I think that's maybe a sign of a great book where you would read more if there was more, but you're content with where it ends. Oh, it was so good. It was so good. <laughs> I really highly recommend this one. If you haven't read it yet, it is like dreaming a book. I mean, it's just brilliant. It's just such a good book. Um, even down to like details where there's a man whose name you never get. It's like redacted. But really what it comes off as is like, you didn't quite hear what his name was. And it makes so much sense for his character. Oh my gosh, guys. <laughs> oh. It like gave, made me worried. Like I felt so much for the characters and there's, oh my gosh, like I don't know what to say. It was so good. It was so good. I felt like I was feeling everything that the characters were feeling. Oh my gosh, I just wish I could live in the world where this is set. Like I wish there was a night circus that I could go to. I mean, the world, the world. I wish I could live in the world. It's so good. Ugh. It's very good. It was a perfect ending. It was a perfect ending. Like, it made sense for the story. It made sense for the characters. I just really loved it. I really loved it. If you haven't read it yet, here's my recommendation. <laughs> like, five stars genuinely. I really, really loved it. If I never said in this video beforehand what this book is about. It's about two magicians and they, um, when they're really young, are kind of pulled into this duel. Um, and they're trained for it and we follow that and then we follow like 10, 20 years of their life. And um, they don't start off knowing who the other is and they don't the rules of the duel aren't very clear either. You start to really understand the basics of it. Um, but it, there's this feeling of like, it's more complex than what we're getting. And we follow them as an idea comes forward to create 
a circus that isn't like any other circus that's kind of strange but captures your attention but not because it's gaudy or over the top but because there's like a subtlety to it and a um just something that that pulls you in without being big um and bright and colorful um Oh my gosh, like this book. It's so good. I don't know how many times I can say it's so good. Um, but yeah, we follow them as they're both part of the circus in very different ways. And then we follow their interactions with other people within the circus. And outside of the circus, there's a lovely relationship uh, and friendship built between one of them and a clockmaker that is just like just feels so sweet and genuine. I loved this book. <laughs> I'm so glad that I read it. I bought this book years ago because my friend told me that he liked it um, and had recommended it to me. And so I picked it up and I was like, well, one day I'll read it. And I never knew enough about it to really get into it or for it to um, pull my attention. I always had other books I was in the middle of and um, over Christmas I decided to start this one. So it, it took me a while to get through it. I started it either just before or just after Christmas, and now it's like January 7th. It starts slow, um, and it ramps up a little bit, but it's fairly, uh, um, it's not a slow-paced book, but it is kind of a more medium-based book. Um, so if you give yourself time to like really immerse yourself into it, give yourself time, if you're struggling with the beginning, to just really settle into it and let yourself take time to read it, because it is, delightful. It's so magical to read. I I loved it. I really, really liked it. So that was Night Circus. Oh my gosh, I've been talking about this for too long now. Okay, we're starting. I'm so excited. I was a little nervous and then I looked through, because like it looks like a big book, right? And um, I was worried it's going to be way longer than it actually is. Um, and then I just have briefly looked through, it looks like it's about 550 pages, which is a lot still, but it's less than I thought it was going to be, so I'm a little, I'm a little less worried. But yeah, this is my book of the month copy. I kind of have had the idea of doing, um, a video where I read all of the books I've gotten through book of the month, because I genuinely haven't read a single one of them yet, which is insane, because it's been a year since I got one of them. My first one I got December of 2021, and I still haven't read it, and I've never read any of the other books I got through it, which I should read them. I should read them. Um, but yeah, I got like The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, Tomorrow, Tomorrow, and Tomorrow. Um, oh, I can picture it. It's like green and it has a flower on the front. And I can't remember what it's called. Um, and then I got uh Hail Mary, Project Hail Mary, and Killers of a Certain Age, and Legendborn, and this one. Legendborn and this one I got in the same box just like a month or so ago. I don't feel as bad about those. But the other ones I'm like, it's been a long time and it's time to read them. So um yeah, I've thought about doing a video where I read all my book of the month books because it's just been a long enough time. They should I should have read them already. So Anyways, so I'm going to start it tonight and I'll probably catch up with you tomorrow. I'm not going to film any more tonight, um, but me and Babel, we're getting started. I'm excited and I'm worried. <laughs> this book is, I'm convinced, is going to take over my life. I'm convinced it's going to be like my favorite book of the year, which is stressful because it's the first week of the year, but um, I'm... I'm convinced. I just, I know. So I'm going to get started on that uh, and we're going to get going. Okay, last night I finished the first chapter. I didn't read farther than that because I was exhausted. But I am like instantly in love with it. It is heartbreaking right away. I just want to like scoop Robin up and just buoy him up for a second. Let him grieve for a minute. Oh my gosh. And, and the way that he's talked to is so jarring. Very good so far. And I'm literally only like 19 pages in. Um, but I'm 
it's like it will instantly hook you it's it's very compelling i'm gonna do some more of that this morning it's very good yeah i guess i'll update you later on as i have more thoughts about it but that's where i am with it right now okay <laughs> you know how i said i'm gonna go read more of that book well it's nighttime and that didn't happen i mostly just hung out with my family a lot which is great um but now I don't even have time to do it now. I like spent the whole day with my family, which no regrets there, but I do have homework I need to finish. So I'm gonna get that done. It shouldn't take too long. I really wanna read more tonight because I'm hooked, <laughs> but uh, it's not gonna be at this very moment. So I'm gonna do that first. Be responsible and get my homework done. And then I get to read. That's like a little treat for Jacobo. So. <laughs> snacking on these my parents got them for me for Christmas and they they're I, they're like straight sugar pretty sure <laughs> um, yeah sugar and sweet potato starch they have like the perfect crunch and their shape and color makes me so happy and they make me think of um, spirited away and the little sugar stars or like the little stars that they eat I don't know if they're sugar stars but look at them they're like little they're kind of shaped like, uh, they make me think of, um, those planets in <laughs> Super Mario Galaxy, <laughs> but they have, like, a great texture, and they're, like, straight sugar, so of course they taste good. <laughs> but that did take longer than I thought it was going to. It always does. Um, I never plan enough time for myself, but uh, being done does mean I get to read my book now. It's like 10, so that took longer than I thought I was gonna, um, but that's okay. Uh, reading this book for real now, because <laughs> I've spent so much time today just doing other things. So that is what's happening. I'm excited. I'm kind of worried. I think I've said that every single time I've talked about this book. It, like, I'm worried for how my heart is going to handle this because I just, oh, you just instantly fall in love with this boy and just want him to be safe and okay. And anyways, so I am going to read that and I'll catch up with you again tomorrow. Um, I've got class in the morning and then I'm going to do some work for a couple of classes, but I only have one class tomorrow, so Yep, that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. So we'll see you tomorrow. Hi friends. So today has been a good day. Today has been a really good day. Um, I just got back in from hanging out with my family again, and my voice just did a weird thing. Homework's all done. We made pizza, which is really fun. Um, my family doesn't do dairy, and so we were trying out this new dairy-free cheese, which, like, they're really good substitutes for meats now and things like that. Cheese is the one I don't feel like anybody's gotten quite right yet. Um, so we're trying this new one. It comes in a liquid form. It's meant to be baked on pizzas and things like that. 
Um, so we tried it for the first time and it wasn't bad. Um, I want to try it again now that I kind of understand how it's going to work a little better. But in terms of Babel, I am on page 83. Um, we just met Letty in Victoire. I, I know I've said this already. I really like her writing. Um, I think she does a really good job. I love the use of the um, footnotes. I love the characters. I You really fall in love with them right away um, and, and feel feel for them. So I'm excited to, to finish that one up. I think it's really going to be really good. I think I could have it done depending on, I haven't looked at what my next week of homework is going to look like, but I feel like I could get it done in a week if this is the only book I'm reading, right? But the other two books, I've been thinking about um, of Ash and Ember, I think is what it's called, and kind of why I feel weird reviewing it. I rated it what did I rate it? I think I rated it two or three stars and it's not great. Um, I, I have a harder time like talking about books that I don't like because I'd way prefer to just talk about the books that I do like. If you're going to read this one, look at trigger warnings and not just her list of trigger warnings because I don't think she actually does a great job of telling you which ones are in there. I'm trying to balance letting myself enjoy the things that I like while also being critical of them. I think that's really important to be aware of what I'm consuming. And so I, I'm trying to figure out where I feel on this one, which was like, I kind of just turned my brain off and read it. And for the romance in it, that was kind of fun. It wasn't a great romance. This plot wasn't great. That all being said, I think I've said this already. I am going to read the next one. The Night Circus though, I would a thousand percent recommend. I think it's brilliant. I think it's so good. I rated it five stars and like, I can't stop thinking about it. <laughs> yeah the writing to the characters to the the setting i think the setting is really what makes it so like oh just sparkle in your brain i it's been a long time since i've read a book where i've like wanted to go to the place it was set in that hasn't happened to me in a long time um and this time the whole way through i was just wishing i could be in this place and could picture it so perfectly because of the way it was described um oh, it was just a lovely read I'm so glad that I read it and to Jason if you ever watch this thanks for recommending it to me because I really liked it yeah I'm trying to think of what else that's kind of been my week I want to get better at these vlogs because <laughs> I enjoy watching them a lot I love listening to people's vlogs about books um and their thoughts about them obviously but I kind of forget that I'm doing it. And so I'll start the beginning of the day and then not ever update. So I want to do another one. I don't know when it will be, but I'm going to try again and try to be a little bit more consistent. I say this at the end of every single video, but I do want to be more consistent with my videos. I do really enjoy making them. I just kind of forget to. So um yeah i would love to make a video of my reading goals for this year um to do some of the wrap up from last year and um yeah we'll see we'll just see how it goes um i have a tiktok that i am super active on if super active on i post once every couple days so like way more active than on here if any of you are interested you can go check me out there um i post on my instagram both my art and my book story am. so yeah I'll see you all another time hopefully soon I I think soon I think soon <laughs> have a good week guys